this uh, this is the time of year you wonder who's going to be at church because there's so many people sick. So we're glad to see you here this morning. And uh, I want to read one verse of scripture as we begin this morning. And that is from Micah chapter 4 and verse 5. This is a verse my wife and I, when we were dating, uh, claimed as our verse. And uh, uh, it says, For all people will walk everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. And uh, we are here to worship him this morning. Danny is uh, sick, so I am your resident song leader. And uh, I know, I know. All right, so let's stand together. And we're going to begin with His Name is Wonderful. <coughs> Uh, 
uh, and uh, we were under the impression it could take five months or more uh, to sell a house in this current market. Uh, our house sold in a week and a half uh, without conditions uh, for the price that we were asking. And so we are grateful to the Lord. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that means that we are moving January the 20th. I will be commuting back and forth until Pastor Ryan comes. Um, so don't worry about that. I'll be in the office Wednesdays and Thursdays, and uh, we'll be uh, teaching the Bible study Wednesday night and preaching on Sunday. Uh, I just wanted you to be aware, okay? Uh, for some of you, that is disappointing news. For others, you are willing to help us pack and get out of the community. Uh, but we're grateful for how God has moved. And as we sit, step back and look at everything that has taken place over the last few months, uh, we cannot help but see the hand of God at work. And so we give him all the praise. And uh, if you are wanting to move uh, or help move, you're more than welcome. All right? Okay, let's get to the announcements that matter. We are, uh, with our Awana Christmas store coming up, we are accepting any monetary donations towards uh, purchasing the items for the kids for our Awana store. So please, if you have anything that you would like to contribute, please speak to Cindy Sauer. Uh, the youth have their Christmas party this coming Friday night. Now, Kevin and I are looking after youth until Richard is able to come back. Uh, and by the way, I guess I can announce that everybody in the Braun home is home. Amen. Amen. Uh, their baby, I guess, came home yesterday or the day before, and uh, Michaela's been released after her gallbladder surgery, and so we praise the Lord uh, for answered prayer. But youth. Uh, young people, keep in mind, Friday night, 7 o'clock, you don't want to miss this. We're going to have a lot of fun, and uh, we have some stuff planned that you will want to be here, including pizza, all right? And uh, we're asking you to bring a $5 fun gift that can be exchanged uh, during the activity. All right, and our Christmas gift happens next weekend. I cannot believe that we are there. The next Saturday night at 7 o'clock will be the first presentation, uh, and then Sunday morning at 11. Uh, we do the Saturday night for the community, so if you have friends or family in the community that go to other churches, uh, please feel free to invite them to come on the Saturday night to take in the cantata. And we appreciate the work that the choirs put in because they have been faced with one illness after another uh, throughout their entire time of practicing. Christmas Eve service is going to be at 6.30, uh, and that's on the 24th, in case you uh, were wondering. And then Christmas morning, we will be having a uh, service at 11 o'clock. There will be no Sunday school. Uh, we kind of uh, discussed amongst ourselves, are we going to do a Christmas Eve service since Christmas morning is Sunday? And the answer is yes. We're going to be here uh, uh Saturday night and Sunday morning. We hope that you'll be able to join us. Bring your family. Uh, this is what Christmas is all about, being in the presence of the Lord. All right, I think that may be all of our announcements. It is. All right, let's stand together again as we sing Angels We Have Heard on High.
music. And that will be from Kathleen, Maureen, and Marley. <laughs>
And uh, well, actually, I did preach, but just not here. Uh, and I'm not preaching this week. And uh, so the deacons, I'm meeting with them Tuesday night. They may adjust my salary accordingly, but uh, we are grateful uh, to have the Dinsmore family with us this morning. Uh, they are on their way back to the field of Belize. And uh, Dan contacted me and wanted to be able to come. And uh, I know it's Christmas season, but that's okay. There is no time frame for missions. It is 24-7. And that's what Christmas is all about. Jesus Christ came to be born in a manger, but to die on a cross and to bear the sins of mankind. And so we are here uh, because our commission is to take the gospel to the entire world. And so it is a joy to have the Dinsmore family with us. Thank you for coming. And uh, Dan, I'll have you come and share what the Lord's laid on your heart. All right, well, we are glad to be here this morning. I brought my family with me. There I am. All right. With me, I've got Jason on the end. He's 12. Jocelyn's 16. Michaela is 14. And my wife. And we're glad to be with you here this morning. <laughs> you notice I was going to say, and that's none of your business, but I thought I better not. All right. Well, we are glad to be here with you this morning. In just a moment, we're going to show our video just to show you some of the things that have been going on. We are so thankful that we've been on the field already. We've been down in Belize for just over four years, and so much has happened down there, and it's just amazing to see what God's done. So we're going to show just a quick video, and uh, honestly, just, we're just excited to get back. Um, I'd love to talk with you afterwards and answer any questions you might have at our table. By the way, while you're back there, go ahead and grab a prayer card. We'd love for you to be able to pray for us, and uh, I've even got it the right way up. All right. Um, but we want to show you what God is continuing to do down there. And, and just the blessings he's been able to, how he's been able to work in our lives and through us is just honestly beyond us. But we're going to show a video real quickly, and then we'll get into our message here this morning. Hi, my name is Dan Dinsmore. My family and I have served in the country of Belize, Central America, for just over four years. During our first term there, we were able to adjust to the local culture, establish a church, as well as hand it off to another pastor. And we're excited to go back. We're looking forward to seeing what the Lord has in store for us there. I had the privilege of working with a wonderful group of ladies as Emmanuel Baptist Church of Belize grew. We grew together with ladies meetings and discipleship. We reached out into the community with banquets and ladies teas. Teaching Sunday school and children's music ministry were some of my favorite things to do there. Raising children on the mission field comes with many challenges, but seeing God work in and through their lives is very precious to me. During our time there, We've been able to see people accept the Lord, follow in baptism, and grow through discipleship and preaching. Besides our weekly Sunday school preaching and youth group, we also conduct a local soccer meeting in which we're able to have kids in the community come out and to play, as well as have a halftime devotional and snack. At one time, our church met under a thatched roof. Be careful, snakes and scorpions. But after that, God so graciously provided a property for us, and we're so thankful for what God was able to do there. Some of our other outreach opportunities included helping in disaster relief, open-air meetings, special banquets, and we've had the privilege to share in countrywide youth meetings. God has used us to assist in ordinations and funerals, and even the odd cattle branding. We've also enjoyed being able to assist other missionaries in building programs, as well as fellowship. Even though our work has been broad, it all focuses around the one main thing, and that's sharing the love of Christ with others. In the beginning of 2021, it became evident that we would need to return back to Canada as I dealt with my health. But even through this time, God proved himself faithful, and we were able to install Pastor Omar as the head of the work there, and we're so thankful for what God has allowed him to continue to do. Partway through our time in Canada, 
we felt it necessary to cancel our support. We didn't know what God was doing, but we knew that he was in control and that he wasn't done with us. But the what, where, and when remained a mystery to us. Until we were reading in our devotions in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, which says, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But if you read the verses around it, we're reminded of so much more. In verse 18, it says, And Jesus came to speak unto them, saying, All power is given unto me. We have power through Christ. Because in the last verse, verse 20, it teaches, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We are so thankful and truly believe that this extends to belief as well. We knew years ago that God called us to serve Him and believe. And these verses cemented in us that He's still calling us to do the same. As we return, we're praying to specifically where the Lord would have us to serve. Whether it's taking a church in need of a pastor or starting a new church in a new location. Along with our local church ministries, we want to come alongside other missionaries and pastors within the country. At times, missionary life can be hard. And we want to develop a network so that we can encourage and keep one another accountable. The Bible talks about sharpening one another. And we want to be able to encourage one another in the ministry. Another desire we have is to bring a few things with us that might be able to be used around the country for special services at different churches. Things like some big tents and a bouncy castle and some games that we could use as a collective. These special days are not meant to solely entertain people, but draw them together within the church environment that they might be able to hear some sound biblical preaching and see the love of Christ within the body of Christ. And lastly, we need you. Believe is an amazing place to minister, whether it be in a full-time ministry vocation or a place to get planted as you serve and maybe learn another language like Spanish. We would also love you to come down on a short-term mission trip. Believe is the perfect place to live life and share new life in Christ. We're excited to return, and we'll be doing so at the end of 2023. We cover your prayers and financial giving as well. See you and believe. All right. Who's ready to come down to Belize with me? We are all set. Taking reservations. No one. All right. That's okay. That's all right. We're excited to go back. As you can see, there's so much to do down there. Uh, we're thankful for the opportunity we have we can just go into really any public school or Roman Catholic school down there and just preach the gospel. We can, we can do a religious curriculum for them, pass out Bibles, we can go to the jails. Really, we are very unrestricted in, in our ministry there. And that's such a blessing. But as you know, with so much opportunity, you can do a lot of things, right? And that's honestly why I had to come back. I was doing too much, and I wasn't getting the rest I needed. So we're thankful for the opportunity. We've had to come back to recharge. I'm thankful for God's direction in bringing Pastor Omar. Uh, last time I ch checked with him, um, they just baptized four people that Sunday. And uh, just a blessing to see the work continue and, and God being in control there. So we are excited to go back. We're excited. Honestly, Belize has become our home. And, uh, and we're just excited to get back there. Although we love the snow, um, really it's for the people we're going back to. And, and no, it's, it's nice and warm there as well. That's a perk, but uh, we're excited to get back to our home. And as was said there, we plan to be back there in about a year. It'll take that much time to re-raise our support and get around to some churches. And there's a lot of planning that goes involved in moving to another country. But we're so excited about that. All right. Don't you love technology? I'm going to turn it this way. We're not even going to fight with it today. All right. So this morning, I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts. I don't know what you're like, but for me, when I read a portion of scripture, I, I have a favorite character. You ever, you ever been there? Like, man, I really like this person that I'm studying right now, which is wonderful until you read something else, right? And they're like, oh, well, now I like this guy. For me,
me right now, the person that is my favorite is Philip. Philip, what we see in the life of Philip is he is just, he's faithful. He's willing to serve God wherever God might direct him. And because of that faithfulness, we see so many things happening um, in and through him. And that's an encouragement to me. I, when I think of myself, I think, well, I'm not really anything you know, special. I'm not a big deal. But if God can use somebody just because they're willing, maybe he can use me as well. Anyways, this morning, like I said, we're in the book of Acts. I love the book of Acts. To me, the book of Acts serves as kind of like the, uh, the backbone for the New Testament. From the book of Acts, we can plug in other books, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and, and others, as we see the missionary journeys, as we see the letters that are written out, and see how the whole Bible just comes together, how it ties together, we can see God's handiwork, and, and just how it's, it's all just agrees with each other, okay? And it's in the book of Acts. Like I said, we're, we're in today. I hope you got there. We're going to take a, a time of prayer as we open up our service, and then we'll continue. Let's, let's bow for a word. God, our Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. We, ha we thank you for the opportunity we have to, to meet here this morning. And Lord, as we do, as we look into the life of Philip, I pray that you would maybe stir something in us. Lord, that you would work in our lives. Give us something today from your word that we might be able to read and apply and, and do likewise. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Acts chapter 8, if you're familiar with church history, you'll understand that just before this part in, the, in chapter 6 and chapter 7, you would see that we would have Stephen, right? Stephen comes on the scene. In fact, in Acts chapter 6, verse 8, it says that Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. But as you would continue to read, you would find out that, that he was tried for his faith. He had to give account of what happened and, uh, and what God did there. And we see that he was judged and eventually stoned for his faith and witness. As Saul greatly persecuted the church, it talks about. But it was on the heels of this event that we're going to read today about Philip. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 6 start like this. It says, And Saul was consenting unto his death, that is, of Stephen. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. That's an important verse. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Skip down to verse 25 with me as we continue. We'll, we'll cover that middle part in a little bit, but in verse 25 it says, And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then, verse 29 says, the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join myself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? 
for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, he came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let's stop there. What a wonderful passage of Scripture as we see what has happened and how Philip was just willing to be used. As we saw in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, there's a bit of a storyline split. It says that they that were, that, were, um, that were there, and they scattered upon the persecution of Stephen. And we follow this storyline with Philip, and then later we would see in the next chapter, uh, and so on, we would see Saul becoming Paul, and that great story that happened. If you continue in verses, uh, continuing in verse uh, 19 of chapter 11, it would say, again, something very similar. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that rose about Stephen, traveled as far as Venice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none of the Jews only. But today we're talking about Philip. We, we were not going to follow that track. Like I said, one of the things I really like about Philip in this passage of Scripture is we see, for me, how God blesses faithfulness. Now, Philip would have known what had happened to Stephen, right? He would have known the persecution and the turmoil that would have arisen. That's a new word, arisen. <laughs> because of what happened there. He was aware of these things. Did Stephen, because of Stephen, did Philip run away? I don't think that's what happened. He, if I was Stephen, if I was Philip, I would have said, man, if I was alive, I'd probably be a more effective witness, right? So, so I believe, as he was directed by God, he ran rather towards another opportunity to be used by God. When he saw the persecution and what was going on there, he also departed and went elsewhere, preaching the gospel. He didn't say, you know what, I'm going to take a vacation. I'm going to let things die down a little bit. He said, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to be faithful. When Philip saw this opportunity to uh, witness close, he went elsewhere, preaching Christ. We notice that Philip understood he had a primary objective. He had a singular focus. And he was aware what his job was to do. His main purpose on earth was to preach Christ and to make him known. Now, I'm sure we would all agree and understand that that's a great job for a pastor, right? Pastors should be doing that. They should be preaching the gospel. They should be witnessing it and sharing their faith with others. That's a great thing. And even seeing them discipled and, and growing from there. But do we realize, church, that that's our job as well? We are all to be witnesses. We are all to understand this, this singular focus in our lives. 1 John 3.18 says this, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Actually, actually doing something about it. Now, I'm thankful that in a church setting, we can, we can give a testimony. We can say, I'm so thankful the Lord saved me. And, and what he's done in that is fantastic. But when was the last time you shared your faith outside these doors? When was the last time you shared what God has done in your life? James 2.20 says this, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Like I said, I, I'm a Christian, but, but nobody else knows that. We've, we've got a problem. A couple months back, we moved into a, into a, a different place. And in this house, um, there was some work to be done. And uh, I, not that I know everything, I'm just cheap, okay? I said, you know what, we need to fix a few things in the house. We need to upgrade it, and we need to do some things. So we, we, we chose the kitchen, and instead of ripping out the counter the tops and the cupboards and replacing them, I said, you know what? I've seen it done. You can just sand them down and paint them again. Okay, <laughs> great. I went a step further. I even take them. I even took them off the, the doors, not the whole cabinet. <laughs> not that good. I took the cupboard doors off, sanded them down. We painted everything up. By the end of the day, you know, I put them all back up. I thought, man, I am done. 
You know, check that off the list. I have a to-do list, I'm sure you do as well, okay? And I thought, one more thing, I can just, all right, fantastic. Well, I came to find out some of the doors, you know, they, they squeak. <laughs> some of them actually would hit each other. And, and one of them, right where the place were, would wiggle. Yeah, actually, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> well, my wife said, honey, there, there's some, you know, it, it's not done. So I said, I'll take care of that. You know, I, hey, I, I'm a good husband, a good father. I'm going to take care of this thing. I'm going to, okay, great, all right. Well, as time went on, it, about a week had passed, actually, and she asked me again. Could you imagine that? She asked me again, honey, aren't you going to take care of these things? And I said, I said I would, right? I, I'll get to it. And um, but, but honestly, it wasn't until I actually fixed those doors, right, that I put some, some work to it. I believed I was going to do it. But until I had actually done something, nothing was done, right? But so often is often true with our, with our Christian life. Well, I'm a Christian, and, and I need to witness to my neighbor, and I'm going to do it. That was 10 years ago. Or, or you know, that was, that was so long ago. I, I felt the Lord convict me of my, uh, the need to, to share the gospel with this person, and, and I'll do it. Oh, no, they passed away. You know, and so often we think we're going to do something, but... We need to put some, some action to our faith here. Isn't it amazing? The world knows what Christians are, right? Hold on, you're telling me, I was, I was just witnessing to a man the other day, and, and he said, you're, you're a Christian, right? I said, yeah. <laughs> so that means you don't drink, and you don't cuss, and you don't, you know, all sorts. And he said, I said, no, 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 <laughs> you know, really. And then eventually we were able to get around to the plan of salvation. But I wonder why that is. I think that's on us. I think often we share with the world the things that we're not supposed to do. How's that going? Would it be far, a far better testimony if we shared with them the love we found in Christ? And the peace and the assurance that we found in knowing Him as our personal Savior? And, and what if we shared those things with the world? What a better place we would be. Do they know what we're for? Do they know what we experience as a child of God? Or, or are too, we, sometimes, some Christians are too busy condemning. And, well, you're a sinner. And, okay, sure. They need to understand they're, they, they're in sin and they have the need of a Savior. I understand. That's part of salvation. But so often we forget about the love Christ shows for people. We need to show that as well. 1 John 3.18 we talked about it before. That verse mentions the word love. The Bible says in 1 John 4.19, we love him because he first loved us. God is our perfect example of what love is. And we know that because of, first, uh, because of John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave. Some, sometimes it's going to take some effort. Sometimes it's going to take a little extra. But it's so worth sharing. He loved the world so much that he gave. We, we talk about this act of selfless love and, and giving oneself for another, in this case, by dying for them, Christ on the cross. Remember what it says in John 14, 15? It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, well... I want to show Christ's love. Now, honestly, if you knew who I was in here and in here, you would say, Pastor, why did you bring him? I mean, man, maybe, maybe he, well, I don't know about this guy, but I'm sure we could also say the same thing about ourselves, right? We are desperately wicked. Yet in our state, Almighty God sent his son to die for us. Now, no, we love him because he first loved us. How do we love an almighty God like that? We want to reciprocate that kind of love, but you understand we serve an almighty God, correct? He, he cannot lie. He cannot sin. He, he is not in that same state. So how do we do so? We Turn with me to Matthew chapter 22, and we'll see what it says there. Matthew 
chapter 22 is an interesting passage of scripture. It talks about um, some people trying to trick Jesus. It just happens to be a lawyer. By the way, I love lawyers. I don't know if there's any in here. But uh, this, this man was a lawyer, and he's trying to trip up Jesus by asking him some questions. It says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, it starts like this. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, we know what that means. He shut them up. They said, man, what are we going to do about this? They were gathered together. One of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. But it continues there. It says, And the second is like unto it. Meaning they're, they work together here, okay? And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If we want to show God if we want to reciprocate that kind of love that he has shown to us, we've got to show it to our neighbor. Say, but Pastor, I think I have an exemption. You don't know my neighbor, right? Hey, remember, don't look at your neighbor. I'm not talking about the person next to you here today. I'm talking about everybody, okay? You, that person that you just have to think about, and it's like, oh, you just ruined my day. Ah, that person just gets me going. Remember what was done for you? What a testimony we would have if we just decided that we would show the love of Christ. And how, how amazing what it, that is. Philip understood this. And, and Philip understood this, firstly, because as we see here, he was a willing servant. Okay. You say, Pastor, hey, sign me up. I'll be a willing servant if it meant going from a place of persecution to a place of prominence. You know, going from this where, where he was... His friends were being persecuted for their faith, being stoned to death, to a place where, hey, some big things are happening. Sign me up. I'll do it. Okay, great. That's fantastic. But, and that, that's what happened. But from verse 5 to 25, we would read, as I said, how the work of the Lord grew and then it received and were added to the church. It would be easy to follow Christ then when everything is moving forward, when everything looks good. But then we get to verse 25. Now, maybe you're more spiritual than me, okay? But sometimes, do you ever kind of have an argument with God? you would be like, oh, Lord, I don't, I see what you're doing here. And I see the, the direction you're trying to get me to go, but mm, I'm not sure. You know, like maybe I know better in this situation. <laughs> or, or, or hmm, maybe I'll pray about it for a while. You know, and see if that goes away. We see in verse 25 and 26 how the work of the Lord, in these verses, how, how the work of the Lord grew and everything was going fantastic. But what about when we get to verse 25? Like I said, up until verse 25, Peter was a big deal. He would probably be like, now God, I see what you're trying to do, but I'm a, I'm a big deal here. We've got scores of people following you and becoming disciples and and you want to do what? In verse 26, I'm not even there. I hope you are in Acts chapter 8. It talks about the fact that he was asked, it talks about how the angel of the Lord came. In 26, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And it first says in verse 27, I'll pray about it. No, that's not what it says. It says, And he went. And he arose and went. God moved Philip from a place of perceived prominence where he was a big deal to the desert. To a place where I mean it's the desert. And and he's just willing to go. Be willing to obey the Lord and follow on in. Why in the world would he do that? He was just a willing servant. He was willing to be directed wherever the Lord would direct him to be. And because, number two, he understood what there was there for him, waiting for him. There was a wanting sinner. Now, I, I know you understand, as I do as well, we live in a world full of people that are searching for something. Searching for something to fill that void in their life, that emptiness. 
in, in Belize, they, they try and fill that with alcohol. That's the, the drug of choice down there. It's cheap and easy accessible. And um, they just try and bury those pains and those, that emptiness with alcohol. But we know what the answer is. We got so much to share that with them. And, and this is why Philip went. God directed him because he was willing and because he realized that all around us were people searching and in need of a Savior. Now that causes me to wonder, why in the world wasn't there anybody closer? Honestly, I'm sure there was. But maybe they just weren't willing. We ought to be willing to follow and, and, and share the gospel with others. See, the world is absolutely full of people that are searching and longing for truth, longing for answers. But unfortunately, I'm afraid they're often met with a Christian who's so often focused on, on other things, on their job, on their, their hobbies, or, or really anything else that would distract them from keeping their mind on that main focus. Us not doing what we ought to be doing. You say, Pastor, does that mean I shouldn't work? No. No. But, 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 but why do we work? What's the goal there? As you can see, I work. The Bible says if you don't work, neither shall you eat, right? That, that's the reason, okay? That's why we are to work. And, and in so doing, it can be an extension of uh, our ministry that we can reach other people. But so often I feel that people try and work a job and put in the overtime and do all these things for a sense of being, uh, for a sense of accomplishment or, or identification. I am, you ever ask somebody? So, who are you? Tell me about yourself. Well, I, A, it's usually not Christian. It's usually I'm a bricklayer. I'm a, a, a doctor. I'm a, our job is to put food on the table. That, that's what it's there for. So we can continue on our main focus ought to be to share the love of Christ with others. We ought to continue doing that. No, wherever, wherever we are, and, and with that as our main focus, it will direct our life and what we ought to be doing in every area of our life. So we see, first of all, a, a, a willing servant. We saw the wanting sinner. That was this, this Ethiopian saying, hey, I'm, I'm reading the Bible here. I just don't get it. So thirdly, I'm thankful for a witnessing Spirit. We see the Holy Spirit here working in, and I believe, three different ways. We see this man is searching. He is longing for answers. He is longing for hope and truth. And I believe that is because the Holy Spirit's already been impressing upon his life the need of something. What we hear of tribes in different faraway lands and, and different places where they know there's something and they're searching. You can see how some of those things tie in, and it's amazing. But he's searching for truth. Where is he doing so? In, in Isaiah, he's reading the scriptures. And that's the second one. I'm so thankful that God works through his word. Amen. Isn't it amazing? With all the struggles, with all the questions and, 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 and fears in life, we can turn to the word of God. Amen. It is our source of, <coughs> of, of hope, of, of contentment and security. You know, a verse I love, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We all have people in our lives that have left, right? We all have things, uh, situations that we've been felt abandoned, left. We've been in our own deserts to know that we have a God that will never leave us or forsake us, who loves us with an everlasting love. We ought to share that with others. But like I said, secondly, he does through, through his word. And thirdly, through the man of God. In this case, it's Philip. Saying, hey, what you doing? I see you up there in that chariot. What's going on? Uh, I'm reading the word of God. I'm reading Isaiah's here, and I just don't get it. Cue the preacher. All right, step in. That's our opportunity, right? To, to go and, and to witness. What I think is amazing, and something I'm thankful for here, is the fact that, have you ever thought about God wants to see people come to know him Amen. more than you do? Amen. That's comforting to me. It's like, I'm trying to do it all. Okay, check yourself, right? God wants to see them come to himself even so much more than you do. And as, and as 
as he plants the seed in them, we need to be willing to water and to harvest. And, and, and as it says in John 4, 35, Say ye not, there yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Like, look around you. For the field is white already unto harvest. So, like I said, those three, those three areas, those three ways in which the Holy Spirit works. So may I encourage you with a few things this morning. As we know that God wants to see the seed planted and, and he is doing his job, would you pray that people would bring, that God would bring people across your path to witness to? You ever done that? It's kind of like praying for patience, right? Lord, give me, oh, I don't even want to say it. And these struggles come into your life. Lord, would you bring somebody across my path this morning that I can witness to? And when you do that, when you're ready to see what God will do, oh, it comes. Let me tell you. The, like I said the other day, I was just up on our roof working, and a, a quality control guy was coming. He said, hold on. So you're one of those Christians? Like, like real, read the Bible and hallelujah and all that? But, yep, here we go. You know? It's amazing how God will bring people across your path. So pray that God would bring people across your path. And secondly, realize that it's God's job to bring them to himself. Amen. Okay, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're about done here. I, this, is, this is encouraging to me. Like I said, I'm a missionary, I want to see people saved, I want to witness wherever I am. And secondly, I don't know about you, but, but as a missionary, guess what I get to do about once every month? We're trying to stretch it every two months. We even write a report, church, um, it's been a wonderful month. Uh, we've seen 14 people saved, or whatever that number, you know. We have to report on these things. Um, and can I tell you, sometimes I get nervous about that. But Lord, I've been witnessing, and I've been, just people aren't coming, or, or they are. We need to realize that it's God's job to bring them to himself. It says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. It says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So that neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers, it says, together with God. We are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. That's a wonderful partnership, and I tell you what, I got the good end of this deal, right? Okay, I, I just need to be willing, and God's going to bring the bring the increase. He's going to do his part. And that is such an encouragement. Why? Because we see number four, and lastly, we have a wonderful story. If we read from chapter, uh, this chapter, verses 30 to the end, we would, we would see this man getting involved in and sharing uh, the gospel. A songwriter said it like this. There's, uh, we have a story, we have a story to, be, to tell to the nations, right? That's everywhere. Uh, I'll be doing that in Belize, sharing the love of Christ and the, the gospel, the salvation message with them. But we need to be doing the same here too. We have a story to tell to the nations everywhere that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and mercy, a story of peace and light. You, you've probably heard it before, but I like the saying. It says, you might be the only Bible that some people will ever read. Think about it. What, what are they seeing? Is your life a reflection of Christ? In, in your actions at work or as that neighbor or, or whatever that is, do they see Christ in you? Now, now, I don't think we need to be, the Bible uses the word peculiar, right? That doesn't mean weird, okay? Peculiar, there's something different about this one. I don't know what it is. And as they get to know you, and you have that opportunity to share with them why you're different. I'm going to read three verses as we close here this morning. It's in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. It really just sums it up. And it says this. Ye are the light of the world. That, that's our job. Okay, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. I mean, that's just foolishness, right? Put on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Why? And glorify your Father which
which is in heaven. I am not a big deal, but I'm so thankful that I serve a God who is. Amen. I want to encourage you this morning, share that with others. Just be willing and see God, what God might be willing to do in your hearts and, your, and in your life as you just be willing to follow him. We're going to pray and I'll ask the pastor to come. Lord, our Father, we thank you. Thank you for another example in your word of just a man who's just willing, who, who just wants to be used and how you do such a wonderful job of working in and through him. God, our Father, I pray that even again you would convict my own heart and work in and through me, Lord. We thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dan. Uh, we're going to stand and sing our closing song, but let me just say this. If you are here today and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, all of this is foreign to you. You have no idea what we're talking about. We would love nothing more than to sit down with you with an open Bible and share with you what the Bible says about how you can know for certain that you're on your way to heaven and that your sins have been forgiven. And uh, even for those who are watching online, please feel free to contact the church. We would love nothing more than to be able to sit down and share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's stand together. As we sing, the light of the world is Jesus. Thank you. 